Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, thank you for joining us today. Evaluate to motivate. Nobody likes to be criticized. Everybody needs to improve. How do you get by that juxtaposition where people don't want to be criticized, but they still need to be critiqued to improve? You evaluate. An evaluation is a mixture of critique and positive reinforcement. And how do you do that? Number one is you have to be honest. You have to be honest about what you say, both positively and critically. You have to be positive, you have to be honest about that because as soon as you are not honest about it, you lose credibility. Gee, honey, does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> <clears throat> You never answer that yes or no. You might say, I like the lines on that dress. The color is very nice for you. It matches your complexion, it matches your hair. You have accessorized very well. And then you might say, well, you know, it is a bit tight. <laughs> Let's go out to Nordstrom's and find you something that you're really going to like. That's a proper evaluation. <laughs> Mommy, I drew this picture. Oh, gee, honey, that's a great picture of a giraffe. No, oh, mommy, that's you. <laughs> How do you evaluate that? You put it up on your refrigerator. Thank you, honey. I'll put it up here. Gee, mommy has a long neck. You be supportive. You be supportive of what they're doing. Help them out. You want them to come back. So you be supportive. You be honest, and you be supportive, and you be positive about what you say. It is positive to be, it is possible to be positive about something that you're critiquing. You talked a little faster than I was able to understand. I really want to be able to understand what you're saying. That's positive. If they're talking too fast and you say, oh, I didn't understand a single word you said, that's a negative one. You want to be, want to be positive about it. You want to be consistent. Remember, you're the expert on these evaluations. It doesn't matter the speaker, and it doesn't matter you. But when you're evaluating someone, you're the expert on the evaluation. Be consistent, be positive, be supportive. Another thing to remember is you have to be empathetic. You have to show empathy and compassion. Some of the people that come into Toastmasters here, they've got really small voices. That's just the way they are. <laughs> but you can help them to speak to the back of the room. Help them to say, by saying, the people in the back of the room want to hear what you have to say. Mm. Not just the people in the front, but those people in the back. They want to hear what you have to say. Help them to stand up straight. Help them project. Help them to breathe. Now, they might not be a loud speaker at any one time, but they'll be a stronger speaker. We have some people that come in with some speech impairment. You're not going to critique them on that. You're not going to say, wow, it was a nice speech, but you really stuttered a lot. They know that. They don't need to hear it again. They hear it every time they speak. So be empathetic. Be compassionate. If they're new, don't overwhelm them. Find some points that you think that they can help, that they can fix, and work on those. Certainly don't want to overwhelm them with too much information. Now I'll tell you, for me, it's three items. Tom, you're going to the store, we need milk, bread, eggs. Cool, got it. Oh, by the way, I'm, while you're there, can you pick up some tortillas, too? <laughs> oh, and, and we need some uh, broccoli, and we need some cauliflower, guess what? I remember the broccoli and the cauliflower. No <laughs> bread and eggs, nope, they're gone. I've been overwhelmed, three things. That's for me. I suspect by seeing some nodding heads out there, most people, it's three things, maybe four. Don't overwhelm them. Find something that they can improve upon, work on that, help them, follow up. Be confident in what you say. Like I said earlier, you are the expert. Stand up and 
commandant as an expert. Don't say something like, well, you know, I haven't been doing this for very long, but I think what would really be good for you, well, you don't do that. It's not necessary. They're looking to you for positive reinforcement. Do that. Be confident in what you do. We here work on the sandwich method. We all know that. You start off with something positive, a critique, and then a positive. Starting off saying, hey, I like that speech. I like the topic, it really spoke to me. What does that do between you and the speaker? It builds a bridge. They're not listening to you, you actually have them captivating. They're listening to you. <clears throat> then you're gonna give them something positive to, to improve upon. And they're gonna be listening to that and they'll think, yeah. They're not overwhelmed, you're being positive, you're being compassionate, they're listening, they're gonna improve upon those one, two, or three points. And then you follow up the speech, your evaluation, with something along the lines of, I can't wait to hear your next speech. And you know, sometimes people know they didn't do a good job on the speech. And you might tell them, you know what, I think that would be really cool if you did this one again. After you practice a little bit, you've been up here once, you've taken a swing, and it was, it was a foul ball, but I think you can hit a home run with this. And you just work on these one, two, or three ad items, and they'll think, yeah, you want the people to think about what you said and want to improve. Critique. Each of these critiques, each of these evaluations is a speech amongst itself. Like I said earlier, you have an opening, a body, and an ending. The hardest part of those three parts is what? The ending, isn't it? That's the hardest part. Opening is easy. Thank you very much for coming. I enjoyed your speech. Easy. The body, you've taken notes. The ending, it's a speech. Just like all the speeches up here. They're actually hard to end. How many times have you heard people giving the speech and all of a sudden they say, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Oh, they're done. Another bad one is when they end two, three, or four times. <laughs> I've seen that happen. <laughs> You're writing, you know, okay, I'm getting ready. Oh, oh no, he's not done <laughs> Oh, they're already yeah. Oh, shoot. Now, well, okay, now I'm going to wait. Oh, he's ending. Shoot, okay. <laughs> so don't take three times to end the speech. <laughs> When you end it, end it. <laughs> Each of these evaluations should really motivate the speaker. That's what we want. We want our about evaluator to improve. But that's not just in here. That's out also in your personal life, where you work. There's some people here, there's supervisors. You've got an employee that needs help. You're not just not, you're just not going to say you're a bad employee. You're coming in late too often. You're taking too long of a lunch break. You might say, hey, look, you know, we really need you right after lunch. We need this stuff done. Can you please come back? We really value you being here. That'll evaluate them to actually maybe come back or maybe to come in early or maybe to think more about what they're doing. You want to evaluate everything from people in your personal life, your children, your spouse, your significant other. There's all sorts of things that you can do, that you learn here, to take home, to help you out in your personal lives. There's a couple stories I have about my evaluations, when people evaluated me. Number one was Ross. <laughs> I really want to thank her for that. I can't think how many times she said, well, Tom, you maxed out. You had 42 ums, 32 ahs, and a capper was, a capper? Oh, yeah, there's more, one other one. So she's really taking me to task, and I really want to thank you for that. Because nowadays I have much, much fewer, a whole lot fewer. <laughs> <laughs> I have fewer, fewer words. There's some. Another was was Laura. When Laura came to this club, we were pretty small. We had the same people, and I got the same evaluations every time. There weren't anything new. It was the same thing over and over and over again. And I thought I was improving pretty well. <laughs> and the Lord gave me a very, very honest evaluation with a clean set of eyes. Yes. And I really appreciate that. I'll tell you, I appreciate everybody's honest evaluation of what they've given me because it's helped me to improve immeasurably. <laughs> Several years ago, I finally got onto a jury, selected for a jury, and I thought, oh, well, I know a lot of people are thinking, how do you get out of it? Nope, I'm gonna be on one. Uh -huh. 
finally got her on the phone. And I'm sitting there, listening to what the judge is saying, and in walks the two attorneys, two young female attorneys. Oddly enough, there was no plaintiff, there was no defendant, just the jury, the judge, and the two attorneys. It didn't take me long to realize, I think this is a practice trial for these two young ladies. Looks like they're right out of law school. We all listened to them, and I listened to them as if I was in a Toastmasters meeting. At the end of the trial, the judge said, if anybody is interested in talking to the attorneys on how they did, they'll be outside the door there. And I took that opportunity along with two other people who go out there and talk to them. And I gave them each an evaluation, a positive evaluation, motivational evaluation. I told them, and they both understood that when they're speaking, they have to be the ultimate authority on that case. They have to convince that jury that they are the ultimate authority, that they're better, they're smarter than the, than the defense or the, the other attorney. And you do that by how? Speaking, speaking with confidence, speaking with clarity, knowing how to talk, because when you speak that way, when you're that confident, you are the expert. And it really doesn't matter how smart or expert the other person is, they're talking with a small voice. <laughs> Why are they talking really too fast? They sound unconfident, and they are not the expert. I gave them some corners, and they all nodded their heads. They both nodded their heads and said, yeah, you know, that's a good point. I should do that. I don't know if they ever did. I had no way of following up. But I could tell these two young ladies had at least thought about Toastmasters, because that's their trade, to convince a jury that their case is the right one, that their facts are right, that what they have determined is the right determination. As you walk out this door today, remember everything you learned here at Toastmasters on how to evaluate, how to motivate everybody that's in your lives, because hopefully there will be someone else out there helping to evaluate you and motivating you to improve. Tom. It's a pleasure to be here to evaluate so outstanding speech. I'm pretty sure that all of us have learned something about how to evaluate, to motivate. Now, with all his suggestions that he gave us, very well prepared, so he has given us the foundation in how to give a very good evaluation to motivate. As we know, our program is the sandwich method to give a good, positive evaluation, then we give the critique, and then again, the positive. And as Tom says, this speech usually has the opening, the body, and the ending. And the ending is the most difficult one to accomplish. Because then you start thinking, I always say something good in the beginning. What am I going to do at the end? But it's always good to have more things in your mind to appraise the person, to keep that enthusiasm, to keep going, to become the speakers that we are seeking to become. And that's the reason we're here in Toastmasters, to learn. I had learned a lot. And when I was listening to Tom, I was thinking of myself. Don't speak too fast. Because sometimes we don't understand. Well, I don't even understand myself. <laughs> so, that a, so that was a very good suggestion to learn. And thanks to many of you. As I have been saying before, all of you have been angels in here. Not only to me, but to each other to help in this path that we're going to. I love Tom's speech so much because he has so much sense of humor to put in it. He was like, given the visual examples, we didn't, he didn't have to see, to 
to have a cause, you didn't have to to have the PowerPoint because we could visualize very well all what he wanted to say. I love this statement to build a bridge, and that's why we're here. Let's build the bridge that Tom has given a powerful speech, and I cannot wait to have all these evaluations, to receive the evaluations from now for all of you. Thank you, Tom, for letting me be your evaluator.